Welcome to this lecture series in linear algebra. We will continue our discussion on orthogonality in the context of bilinear forms. And let us recall just one thing that we need. There's only one theorem that we want to do, and it's a very interesting theorem. And all we need to know is the following. So if f is a bilinear form on a vector space v, and uh, w is a subspace of v, then the orthogonal complement of w with respect to this bilinear form f is nothing but this thing, what I've written in white. And recall what is this w perp is all those w primes in v such that s w comma w prime is zero for all w in the vectors uh, in the subspace w. So uh, I hope you remember all these definitions. And uh, one more thing, we say f is non-degenerate on w if the restricted bilinear form is non-degenerate on w, is a non-degenerate bilinear form basically, right? So that's uh, another piece of definition that we saw the last time. Here is a problem just for practice. Uh, it gives a very nice example of bilinear forms. In fact, in some sense, this is the most general, general example. But anyway, so here is the theorem that we want to do. V be a vector space, W be a subspace of V, and F be a bilinear form on V. Then the following are equivalent. The first is that F is non-degenerate on W. The second is that W and its orthogonal complement intersect trivially. And the third is that, in fact, V is the direct sum of W and its orthogonal complement. So it's a very interesting uh, theorem. And now let us prove it. So A implies B. We want to show that this guy is zero where we of course assume that, you know, so we are assuming A, I'm not writing that, so we are assuming that F is non-degenerate on W, and we want to show that uh, this guy is uh, zero, meaning trivial, so fix a vector in it, and we want to show that uh, W is the zero vector. So, want to show that W is zero, all right, so how do we do this? So let, or rather consider, consider this guy. So this is a member of W star. Or before, yeah, so, okay, let me say it this way. So since W in W perp, and W perp, as we saw in the recall, is equal to this. We have Rf W is an annihilator of W, which implies this, that if you restrict F to W, then this is zero, right? This thing kills everything in W, and since this is a bilinear form on W, this guy is zero. So just realize this implies that. That is all that you need to realize. And now, since, since S is non-degenerate on W, uh, this implies W is zero. So here, what we are using is a hypothesis. S is non-degenerate, and hence, rank of this guy is same as the dimension of W and hence this is actually an isomorphism right this is what we used to conclude from this the fact that W is 0 which is what we wanted to show so A implies B B implies A is just reverse 
the above reasoning. So this I leave as an exercise. And uh, now let us show that B is equivalent to C, which will finish the proof because this already shows that A is equivalent to B. And if we show that, show that B is equivalent to C, then we will be done. All right, so let's uh, see why B implies C. So we are given that these two things intersect trivially. We want to show that this is the case and note that it is enough to show that dimension W plus dimension W perp is equal uh, is greater than equal to dimension V. So this is sufficient because once you show this, the reverse inequality is, uh, is already there. This is already there simply because of the triviality of the intersection and hence this would be an equality and now if you couple that with this, you will get the orthogonal decomposition. So just to uh, realize that this is what we want to show. Okay, let's, let me let me put that in a different color. Yeah, so that is what we will do and it's a, it has an interesting piece of reasoning involved. So we consider this map, RF going from V to V star. And we take the projection, I want this to be vertical, wait a second. Sorry, I am a bit particular about these things. Okay, so we we take the projection from V star to the quotient. So this is just taking, oh, sorry, this is just taking some functional to the corresponding coset. That's what that map is. And we have this composition. I compose with RF. All right. So we apply rank nullity to this guy. So by rank nullity to that guy, we get that the dimension of V is uh, the nullity of the map plus rank of the map. The nullity is of course the dimension of the kernel. And the rank is the dimension of the image. Bro. Oh. But what is the kernel of this guy? So kernel of phi composed RF, we want to, yeah, so we want to find this out. So let's say um, V is in kernel phi composed RF. This, it, this happens if and only if phi composed RF of V is zero, which happens if and only if pi of RF of V is zero, which happens if and only if RF of V is in the annihilator of W, which happens if and only if V is in this space, which as we saw in the recall is the W perp. So the upshot is V is here if and only if V is here and hence these two things are equal. So this is equal to W perp and hence what we get is this is a dimension W perp plus dimension image of this composition. But now this is at most dimension W perp plus dimension of the quotient, right? Because this is contained here and hence we can write the full space and at the cost of an inequality, all right? So this is now equal to dimension W per plus dimension V star minus dimension of the annihilator, 
right? All we are using is the fact that dimension of the quotient space is the difference of the dimensions of the participating spaces. And now we use the fact that dimension of the annihilator is something. So dimension of the annihilator is what? Uh, recall that dimension of annihilator of W is dimension of V minus dimension of W. So this is something that we saw way earlier in the course. And hence this is equal to dimension W plus dimension V star which is same as dimension V minus dimension V minus dimension W and this is equal to dimension W perp plus dimension W. So all this uh, thing gives us that dimension V that most that which is what we wanted to do and hence it finishes the proof of B implies C. Uh, C implies A is trivial, right? C is this and B is that, so C implies A, uh, C implies B is trivial, and hence uh, we are done. B and C are indeed equivalent. So that finishes this lecture, and as usual, like, comment, share, subscribe. I'll see you next time.